It says senior adults, but I'm sure anybody who wants to go can join us. There'll be a meal following the revival each day, and we will be staying. And uh, for that, it'll be $5. Joe McKeever will be the pastor for the week or the three days, and the photo sisters will be doing the music. Uh, and Dr. McKeever has also said that he'll be present 30 minutes before and after each of the services because I don't know if you've seen the little cartoons he does, but he does little caricatures, and he wants to make sure he gets a caricature done of everybody who's in attendance. So hopefully we maybe can catch him when he's here instead of going early to the other places. But just a, a lot of great things going on for our senior adults this week. You see the activities for Wednesday night and the schedule there. And just be in prayer for the ministries of our church and, and all that we're doing to, to reach those around us. Then we call your attention to the prayer requests, those who are sick at home or in the hospital in need of prayer, and also those in our church family who have lost loved ones in recent days, as well as our missionaries who are celebrating birthdays today. But as we go to the Lord now in a time of intercessory prayer, let's just remember these and others who are on our hearts. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Let's let's stand and sing it this morning. Lord, you are good. And mercy endureth forever. <clears throat> Ah! Uh -huh. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a great God, a God who loves us, who gave your life for us, and who promised that you'd never leave us or forsake us and would walk with us through every experience of life. Lord, may we never forget that and give to you our very best. We thank you for each person present this morning and ask that you will watch over and care for them and hear our request of prayer and answer them as well. Lord, we yield to you. You know our heart's desire, but we truly ask that your will be done in each and every life and each and every situation. Thank you again for the privilege of worship. And on this special occasion of the observance of the Lord's Supper, I pray that it will have tremendous meaning for each of us as once again we're reminded of your great love and the sacrifice you made that we could be forgiven of our sins and have life with you, life everlasting. So, Father, speak to our hearts, truly guide and direct. We yield to you as we praise you and thank you for who you are, for it's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. to see you this morning as we've gathered to worship the Lord and hope and pray you're having a good day. It's a beautiful day God's blessed us with and we're delighted that you're here. If you're a guest of ours, we do hope you'll fill out the flap that's on the bulletin and tear that off. It's 
perforated tear easily, drop that in the offering plate when it comes by and be our way of having a record of your attendance with us. But let's stand and greet each other in the Lord. And if you're sixth grader and under, come join us down at the front if you don't mind. But get to say good morning to somebody you haven't already seen or meet somebody new. to see y'all this morning. Did y'all have a good week? No. Did it end better than it began? You don't know? Woo, I hope when I ask y'all next week, everybody can say, boy, I had a good week. That's good. Okay. Uh, today, kind of in the service and with the Lord's Supper, we're going to be talking about memories and remembering things. And you know, sometimes when we see or hear something, it causes us to remember. Like, of course, I don't know how many people here are gonna remember. Every time we sing the song, Victory in Jesus, of course, I think about what the words mean. And that, that's one of my favorite songs. But I also remember something else. I remember when we had the real, regular, real organ, <laughs> and it had the foot pedals, and we had an organist, Mallory Bannister. And every time we sang the chorus on the bass foot pedals, he would go bump, 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 bump. And I told him I always loved the bump bumps, okay? 
And I remember that every time we sing Victory in Jesus. So, you know, it doesn't take much to help me remember things. I've got somewhere it's in the bottom. Look, you know what that is? That's a train engine. Actually, it's not an engine, it's a switcher. But it is an engine. But this is a train engine. It says Gulf Mobile in Ohio on the side. And I have this at my house, and every time I see this, I remember my daddy and the job he had and some of the good memories that I had going to work with him. And I saw the fact that that job put food on the table and clothes on our back and vacations and school and all sorts of things. But I think about it every time I see that or any train, I think about my daddy. I have a lighthouse. And every time I see a lighthouse, there's a couple of things I remember. First of all, I remember how God's light shines on me. And I think about that. You know how a lighthouse shines? It's sitting on a treacherous area on the coast in the ocean, and it keeps the ships away from the rocks. And I think that's what God's light does for me. But it also reminds me that I need to let my light shine to help other people and to bring other people to Christ. So that's what that reminds me of. I have a picture here. This is one of my favorite pictures. It's old in the cheapest frame I could find. But see that? That's part of my goofy family. Now, they've doubled in size in more ways than one, in number and size, since this picture. But this is mother and daddy and my two sisters and all their children. And every time I look at this, oh, I have so many memories that I think about, and I, it paints a picture for me, and I can just think about it. And I have something else, and y'all knew I was going to have to do this this morning that helps me remember. Now, that's what I would have had to do if the score had it been reversed. Do y'all know what that helps me remember? Where I went to college. Yeah, they played by themselves last night. They had a scrimmage, I think. I don't get to do that very often. But, you know, there's all sorts of things that help us remember. We have pictures. Y'all probably have pictures in your rooms of things, and you have your school pictures, and you get pictures of friends. Well, this morning, we're going to be experiencing the Lord's Supper. And Brother Smith's going to be explaining a lot more. But when you see it, when we do it, remember that this was the way that Jesus painted a picture for us. Now, they didn't have cameras in the Bible and didn't do a lot of painting in the Bible. And so we don't have a picture. Now, you may see a picture of the Lord's Supper, and you see a long table and they're all on the back side of the table, and Jesus is in the middle. That's probably not quite how it happened. You know, that's just someone's interpretation of what they thought. In the Bible, they reclined when they ate. Go home and ask your parents if you can lay down to eat lunch at the table. Say, can I lay down? You know, they always say that because you're slouching. They say, you're laying in your chair, sit up. But, you know, we don't have a photo of what happened but because of the words that we have in the Bible, a picture is painted for us about what happens. When Jesus was there and he passed out the bread and he told us this is to be a symbol and to remind us of his body that went to the cross and died for us. And when we drink the grape juice, that it reminds us of the blood that he shed when he went to the cross and to help us remember so we can see it kind of as a visual painting of what God did for us. And we are so thankful for that. It, it's very important that we remember what Christ did because that's, that's the whole purpose and that's the whole reason we have forgiveness of our sins, that we can have that and claim it. And so as we take, do the Lord's Supper today, now some of you may not be old enough or may not made the decision yet in your heart, and that's fine. It's just like, you know, there's all sorts of things. You don't get to vote till you're 18, do you, for an election? Well, you know, some things come and when they're supposed to, and that will happen in each of our lives, hopefully, 
when we ask Jesus into our heart. But for those who have today, it'll be a time that you can actually take the Lord's Supper. And for those who haven't, it'll be time that we can observe what others are doing and watch them and pray for the day that God is in our heart that we understand it all. Now, it can be confusing. I remember my mother told me the first time I saw it, I looked at her. She'd been told me we were going to have the Lord's Supper, and I couldn't eat it. And when they passed it, she said, I looked and said, they didn't give you much, did they? My idea was all wrong, but then as I grew and understood, and now I'm so thankful I can take it, and it is so meaningful. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. God, we're so grateful for that, and Lord, we know it's something we don't even deserve. And God, I pray for these children that are here today in, in this service and others, Lord, that it will be meaningful to us, that we will meditate and concentrate and, and pray and, and seek you during this time, Lord, and remember and see that visual picture as Brother Smith paints it during his message, God, of just how much Jesus loved us and what he did for us. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.
deacons come forward for the morning offering, we're certainly thankful for what God's done to bless each of us. And as we give back a portion to him in thanksgiving, I'm going to ask Charlie to lead us in a word of prayer, please. Dear Lord, thank you for this day you've given us today. Bless this service. Thank you for dying on the cross for us and saving our sins, dear Lord. Be with the needs of the church and bring Brother Smith as he brings our message. In your name we pray. Amen.
Open your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We'll go back to Romans next week. But this morning as we come to the observance of the Lord's Supper, as you know, I like for the Lord's Supper to be the message because it is a message in itself. And I want to share with you from God's Word. Paul was writing to a church that had gotten all out of sorts with how they were observing it, not only in uh, the coming together to observe it, but also in actually how they were doing it. And he wrote some instructions, and it actually begins back over in chapter 10 uh, of 1 Corinthians. You might want to go back and read uh, the latter part of that uh, he, as he's talking about fleeing idolatry. Uh, verse 16, he talks about the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break? Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? He's using even the elements of the Lord's Supper in his talking about idolatry there and talking about the unity that they should have there. But as we look at verses 23 through 26 of chapter 11, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes." The Jews remembered their deliverance from Egypt. You who were in Sunday school, in fact, most of our classes, at least in Sunday school this morning, are, uh, were studying through the book of Exodus. And we were studying that portion uh, of the 10th plague where the death angel or the angel of death passed through the land of Egypt. And only those homes where the blood was on the doorpost would there be protection from uh, the death uh, that would come to the firstborn of all family as well as all herds, all animals in the country of Egypt. They were obedient. Their obedience led to their safety. And they were to remember that every year. The Passover would be observed every year thereafter. It is on that occasion that Jesus took the Passover meal with the disciples and he gives it the greater meaning. He's saying this not only is in remembrance of the past that you have there on your bulletin, if you're figuring, filling in the blanks, it's not only a remembrance of your past when you through obedience were spared the death angel, or your ancestors at least were, but it's also a reminder to all of us of what we're supposed to be doing even now. And then Jesus took these elements and said, look, this represents my body. This represents my blood that's given for you. Now, we know that as he was holding up these elements and, and uh, sharing it with them, he said, this is my body. He held the bread and the disciples understood the symbolism because he's standing there before them. Now, for the benefit of some of our newer Christians, I want to go back and maybe others too who may not remember there are those who, and it's called transubstantiation, there are those who believe that when uh, the elements are prayed over that it literally becomes the body and the blood of Christ. That's their, their, their concept of it. Transubstantiation means it literally becomes body and bread. And to desecrate, to drop a drop of the, uh, of the, the juice would be to desecrate the blood of Christ. And, as, uh, and for that reason, the congregants themselves do not touch it for fear of desecrating the elements that have actually become the body and blood of Christ. There are others who believe, well, it's not literally the body and blood of Christ, but it's almost that. And that's the term consubstantiation. It means that, that the elements represent the presence of God in, through, and under these elements. That's the phrasing that's used with regard to them, that it's almost his body and blood, but not fully the body and blood of Christ. We, however, believe that it is symbolic that as Jesus held these elements and shared with them what this meant, 
that he was using it as a symbol of that which he was about to do when he went to the cross to pay the price of our sins. He was giving himself as our sacrifice. No longer would they need to sacrifice an animal as they had done for centuries. He would be the Lamb of God who the plan was before the foundation of the world set in place. Now he was going to give himself and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all of our sin. It is his blood covering our sin that protects us from the death angel. The angel of death, the second death, uh, meaning that we will go to heaven to be with Christ rather than miss heaven uh, through the spiritual death. And so Jesus was sharing with them that from now on, this will have a greater meaning for you as you come together to receive this. It also represented unity. When they ate a meal together, they were unified. That's why Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, says, look, you people have got this all out of sorts. The, the people of means, those who had more money and, and the more influential folks who didn't have to do the common work, were able to get to church first, and they were gorging themselves on a feast. They would observe the Lord's Supper at the end of a feast, a, a meal together. And so they were coming together, going ahead and eating, and they were finished by the time those who were working in the fields could get out and get there and be able to observe it with them. It was breaking up the unity. There was now disunity among them. And Paul even speaks about the factions that they had in their church and how this is not the purpose. Jesus, in starting this, gave it to be a symbol of what he was doing for all of us and the unity that we have in Christ together. So he was admonishing them and, and rebuking them, really, for their inappropriate way of observing it. Because it does represent the unification of God's people, the coming together of the family of faith to share in this experience of reminding, uh, of being reminded of what Jesus did, that we could be saved, that by asking forgiveness of sins and trusting him as our Savior, he promises that his death on the cross made that payment and is available for all who will trust him. So, Jesus did that for all of us. He said, look, this is my body given for you. I died for you. And as we take the bread, and there, he gave it to them, and as we take it and, and, and eat of it, the, the manner in which we do it, uh, the actions of it are quite eloquent in themselves. It is a receiving from Christ that which he did for us. It's a reminder of that. And it is a renewal of our vow of obedience to him as we come together to partake of it as well. Now, he went on to say here in verse 27 that I didn't read a minute ago, therefore whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. That unworthy manner was the way they had been partaking of it the disunity that it was providing, the taking of it in a frivolous way, not taking seriously uh, the observance of it. And he says, you are, it's, it's like putting Christ back on the cross again when you're doing that. And then he comes with verse 28, so, but as a result of what you're doing, when you come together, let every person examine himself. So, and so let him eat the bread and drink the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks in uh, judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We're bringing judgment upon ourselves when we partake of it in an unworthy way, when we partake of it in a manner that we have not examined our hearts and lives before the Lord to make sure that we have sought forgiveness of the sin of our life. Some people take this term unworthy and say, well, I'm not worthy of what Christ did for me. I shouldn't participate. None of us is worthy of what Jesus did on that cross for us. We're not worthy of him dying for me or you. In, to partake of it in an unworthy manner means in the manner in which they had been ob observing it, meaning in a frivolous way, disuni uh, bringing disunity among the, the family, the body of faith. 
and also in a way that was not examining their life. It was just sort of an add-on to the meal that they were sharing, and it was not being done seriously. And he says, the judgment of God has already come upon you. How was that happening? For this reason, there are many who are weak and sick among you, and many sleep, meaning many have died. He says, when you do it in an unworthy way, God's going to bring his judgment upon you. And that can result in sickness. In fact, for them, it had already resulted in sickness and weakness of body and even deaths among them because they were not uh, participating in this as they should. That's why when we come to observe it, we come in a way that reminds us, first of all, of the need to examine our hearts, and we're going to do that in a few moments. It also reminds us, as it's one of the two ordinances of the church. Now, what's an ordinance? An ordinance is not a means of grace, but rather a vivid way of preaching grace. Just as when you've seen me in the baptistry and I share with you, baptism does not save an individual. It's a picture of what's already happened in the individual's life. And because of their faith in Christ, we can baptize them. So the Lord's Supper, in the same way, is a vivid reminder of the grace of God, a reminder of the fact that he gave his life. He shed his blood. That means gave all of his life. Life is in the blood. The oxygen that flows in your blood goes to all the parts of the body and keeps it alive. Life is in the blood. He shed his life, shed his blood, giving his life for you and for me. So as we come to the observance, we're reminded of the grace of God that was given for you and me in these events uh, in which uh, we participate. So both the baptism experience and the Lord's Supper, not a saving element in themselves. You can partake of this all day and never be saved. You can be dunked under the water all day, and every time you turn around and it still won't save you. You're saved through faith in Jesus Christ. And the baptism experience is a picture of that, done only once. But the Lord's Supper experience is done till he comes back. It's a reminder to all of us, every time we observe it, of what Jesus did, that we could be saved, and the fact that we're to be committed to him daily in our lives. So as we get ready to participate, I want us, first of all, to bow together in a time of prayer. And it to be a time of examining your heart before God. If you're here and you are a Christian, then examine your heart. If, if you, you know God knows everything about you. There's no need to try to pull the wool over his eyes. He knows whether you've, what sin's there. And I would encourage you right now, just between you and the Lord, to ask his forgiveness of your sin. To let him have his way. To make a recommitment of your life to Jesus. To draw nearer to him. And if you're here and you've never made such a commitment to Jesus, I pray that this will be a time of, of decision for you. To be reminded that Jesus in his great love left heaven and the perfection of heaven to come to this earth live among us, and then to die for us, that we could be forgiven. It seems so simple, and yet Satan will get you to put it off and put it off and put it off until it's too late. He'll say, why get in a hurry? And many have gone out of this world without Jesus not because they didn't want to make such a commitment, but because they just put it off too long. And I would encourage you, don't do that. But even right now, your prayer could be, Lord, I recognize that I'm a sinner, and I can't save myself. And I know you died on that cross to pay the price of my sins. And I want to ask you to forgive me and to come into my life and save me and to help me to be the person you want me to be. And in a few minutes, later on in the service, we're going to have a time of invitation. And if you prayed such a prayer, I would encourage you to come forward and share with me that you've made such a commitment.
you prayed such a prayer asking Jesus to come and save you. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come to the observance of the Lord's Supper, I pray that even as your children, we might recognize that we fall short of your glory daily. There are times that we do things that we should not be doing, and there are times that we haven't done things that we ought to be doing. In either way, we're sinning. And I pray that even now, there's been that time of cleansing of our life, of reminding ourselves of where we are with you, and of truly seeking your forgiveness and realizing the seriousness of the moment because it was a, a horrible thing that you died on that cross. You prayed in the garden that night in tremendous agony. Let this cup pass from me. You, you knew what was ahead and if there was some other way that our salvation could be accomplished, you were asking that that be done. But you always ended those three times that you prayed. You ended it by saying, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And the Father of heaven knew that the only way that our sins could be forgiven would be for your life to be given. Thank you for loving us so much that you would bear up, up under the tremendous whipping, the beating that you were given the mocking and the pulling of your beard out of your face, the spitting that they did upon you, the slapping that they did. And finally, as they nailed you to that cross, lifted you before a world, in shame you hung before the world taking my place. Father, I pray that we'll never forget that gift that you offered because of that. The gift of salvation, the gift of the forgiveness of our sins, and the promise of your walking with us daily if we would but walk with you. And Father, we come to this moment in, in remembrance of you and in remembrance of all that you did, not just remembering the past, but remembering what you're still doing for us today in the present and remembering until you come again. For we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. And we do remember presently that Jesus still is walking with us and I trust that you'll tr lean on him every day. Don't think that any matter is too small that you shouldn't call on him for help and ask his guidance because he's concerned about every area of your life and mine. And then it's a time of remembering that he made the promise, I'm coming back. He didn't tell us when. In fact, he said in an hour when you think not, I'm gonna come in a cloud. Every time I see a cloud in the sky, I get to looking. Is this the one? We don't know, but he's coming. And it's a reminder to us, he said, as off as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. I'm coming back. So be reminded as you eat this of the future promise, the future hope, that I'm coming back to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you will be also. And he's going to do it one day. He's kept all the other promises. There's no reason to not believe that he's not going to keep that one. Just keep looking. Keep expecting. Keep waiting. Keep serving because you don't want to be caught napping and unprepared when he comes. As our deacons come forward now to pass this to you, that we observe it together, I want us to enter this time very reverently. And as our deacons come, we first will be passing the bread, a reminder of the body of Jesus Christ that was so brutally beaten for us, given that we could be saved. He took upon himself that which we deserve. And as we bow together in prayer, in fact, the Bible says that on that night, before they passed the bread, they prayed and thanked God for his body that was given for us. And as we do that now, Charlie, would you lead us in this prayer, please?
Amen. remind you as this is being passed out even the manner in which we pass it is symbolic I, I come down on the level where you are because I'm not greater than you we all are looking to our Lord in thanksgiving for our salvation I give it to the deacons who in turn will pass it to you and you in turn will pass it to one another we serve each other as we do this it's a reminder to us of what he did for all of us and that we come equally before the cross in humility, in thanksgiving for all that he's done. And while you wait as others get theirs for all of us to eat together, I want you just to bow in prayer and thanksgiving for what he did for you. Just a reminder of, of his great love and a time between you and the Lord of just saying thank you. Scripture also reminds us that Jesus said, This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not like your fathers ate and died, but he that eateth this bread shall live forever. What he meant by not like your fathers ate and died, it was a reminder that he fed them with the manna in the wilderness wandering. And he said, This isn't that kind of bread. This is the bread of life. Jesus called himself the bread of life, and it's a reminder of his life that was given for us. Let's eat together. The Bible says that on that same night they took the cup and having blessed it, they passed it among themselves as well. And so as our deacons come forward to pass this to you, we're reminded of the shed blood of Jesus Christ that paid the price of our sins. And Matthew, would you lead us in prayer, please, sir? Thank you. 
did for us on Calvary Morning. Help us to remember what you did for us each and every day. As they're passing this out, let me remind you also that the Bible tells us that, that with, with the first Passover and the subsequent Passovers, that the children were going to be asking questions. What does this mean? And that they were to explain to them what it meant, a reminder of that past experience that got them out of Egypt. As we observe it, we know also that there are children that will ask parents, what does this mean? It's a great opportunity for you to be able to share with them what it means, what Jesus did for us. And uh, so in the same way that that was carried on among the Jews, so we're reminded and we pass on the information of what all of it, what this means for each of us. Scripture says that I may say that almost all things are cleansed with blood, and apart from the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Jesus gave his life, his blood, that our sins could be forgiven. Let's eat together. Should I say drink together? We've already eaten the bread. We drink together. The Bible says that on that night, they sang a hymn and went out. We don't know what song they sang. We're going to sing after a little bit. 
But I want us to have an invitation time right now, an opportunity for us as we stand right now to have the privilege of being able to share in a public way what you might have made by way of decisions earlier. A time to let it be known. If you prayed a while ago and asked Jesus to save you, we want you to come forward and let me know, yes, I made such a commitment of my life. If you're here and you need to move your membership to go to work with God's people, we'd love to have you as a part of this church family. If you feel the call of God to full-time vocational service, then you come and share that. Whatever it might be that God's placed on your heart to do, we want you to know that this is a time of invitation, an opportunity to make such commitments to Jesus. So as we sing together, I'm here at the front to receive you. You come as we sing. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thy all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I hold. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper's spots And melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And certainly he can do it. He can wash us white as snow, change the leper spot. He can do anything. Don't ever underestimate the power of God. That's why we need to trust him every day for the strength that we need for daily living and to know he will do what he said he will do. You just keep trusting him. Walk with him daily. He'll, he's there for us. He wants to help you. He's got a plan for your life. And until he calls us home to glory, let's keep fulfilling it. I tell him even at the nursing home, when I go there and am sharing in services every week, I said, you know, you sometimes feel that you can't do anything now. You can't do what you once did. But you know, God still has something for you to do. There's still opportunities of service. I tell them one of the greatest things they might be is a prayer warrior for me. Pray for me. And they can help one another. You know, always, don't ever think that you can't be used of God because he has a purpose for you and he wants to do it. Don't forget choir practice at four this afternoon. It's going to be at Cab. Oh, in the fellowship hall. Okay. What a Go. great time to come and, and join us this week. We're going to introduce our Christmas musical right. this afternoon. And, you know, if you haven't sung in the choir, and, you know, some of you people that can sing, your, your friends have been telling on you because they can hear you, right? Come and join us. Come and join us, and, and uh, what a great time to, to, uh, to jump in. It's going to be an introduction of the Christmas music, so it's going to be an opportunity to get in on the ground floor of it and get to see what it's all about. And begin practicing preparing and then worship at six tonight i'll continue with the subject of angels did you know we're going to judge angels one day that's what it's going to be about tonight so i hope you'll be here six o'clock as we continue our series on the angels don't forget to pray for one another as we go from this place of worship it's important to do that don't ever forget it there's power in prayer let's bow together for our closing prayer thanking god for all that he's done and all that he's going to continue to do and pray that he'll help us to be faithful. Gene Ford, would you lead us, please, sir?